For the past 31 years, our organization has had the privilege of helping thousands of people all over the world fulfill their goals to learn and to grow, often through some pretty courageous self-discovery. And given all that diversity, what amazes us is that we still share so many desires and experiences. We share the desire to live meaningful lives, do meaningful work, to be seen and valued for who we actually are. We share the experience of frequently feeling overwhelmed. And we're often hard on ourselves. And that often comes from the fear that we're not good enough. But we've also learned that we all have this amazing capacity to pause and access insight and wisdom. And it actually turns out that accessing this, pa this pause and getting the insights and wisdom is not too hard. The trick is remembering to access the insights and the wisdom. And so even though we do this professionally, I forget to access wisdom on a regular basis. There are several people in this room who can tell you that that's true. So about a year ago, I decided I was going to take a four-month sabbatical and go on my own little, kind of scary, wisdom quest. And as I was planning for this, I started feeling, okay, four months where you're not working, you actually have to get some stuff done, right? You can't just wisdom quest. So I started keeping, when you need to get stuff done, what do you do? You keep a list, right? So I start keeping a list. And I keep adding to the list. It's all those things that you never get done. So the list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger until, quite frankly, it's huge. So on the last day before I left for my sabbatical, I packed up two big boxes of books from my office, and I wrote the last two things on this big to-do list. Take care of my old knee injury and get into shape because nothing was going to better equip me for my wisdom quest than a huge to-do list, two boxes of books to read, and once again telling myself to get into shape. However, the obvious setup for failure in this wasn't very apparent to me, and off I went on my sabbatical. And the first three weeks were amazing. I read, I walked in nature, I meditated, I wrote, and I remembered wisdom. It was bliss. And then something happened. I started feeling like that feeling where you're not productive, like you're wasting time and you have to get going. And I had to get going on the list because I had to finish the list before I went back to work. And I spent the next few days becoming obsessed with the list. And before I know it, my wisdom quest disappeared. And it disappeared for weeks. And then one day, I was sitting in the waiting room at the acupuncturist by myself, part of that take care of the knee injury item on the list. And these two people came out from the treatment area. And as one of the pair went over to the reception area, one, a young man, came into the seating area. And even though I know better, I couldn't keep my eyes off this young man. He was clearly severely ill. He was painfully thin, and he was walking hunched over and slow. And he sat down near me, and he curled over, and he put his head in his hands, and he closed his eyes. And I was so struck by him, by his presence, and I wanted to reach out somehow, I, I don't know, hold him, give him some energy, let him know that I cared. But I didn't reach out. And then my name was called, and I went back into the treatment area, and as I was laying there, I was so filled with thoughts of this beautiful, hurting young man. Sadness, compassion, frustration at not being able to do anything, hope, for his healing. And then something happened. Some space opened up, some clearing that cut through all those heavy thoughts and feelings. And I realized that that young man would probably give anything to have any of the choices I'd had for the last few weeks. The choices to live an ordinary life, handle the conflicts and chores and challenges. And in that moment, I got my cosmic kick in the pants. 
and it changed my perspective, and it reawakened a space of wisdom that, of course, I had, but I forgot. That space of wisdom that comes in the form of gratitude. And so from then on, I understood that my wisdom quest actually had nothing to do with what I did or didn't do over my sabbatical. It was all about the frame of mind that I carried through the sabbatical, no matter what I did. So we all have versions of our own stories of how we access wisdom. Sometimes it comes prompted from the outside, a person or experience. Sometimes it comes bubbling up inside of us, those aha moments that come when we don't expect them. And sometimes we know we need to stop, make space, be quiet, and wait for the wisdom to come. But even though we know this, even though we've had this experience, we forget it so often, and we lose the opportunity to access our wisdom. So why does this happen? Why do we get overwhelmed? Why do we lose this connection? So for answers to this, we need to leave the realm of the philosophical and go to neuroscience. What's going on in these brains of ours? So the first thing that's helpful to know is that our brains have a strong, organizing, overarching principle to keep us safe and alive. And in order to do this, we've developed brains that are pretty threat sensitive, even the blue states. <laughs> and these threat sensitive brains are ready to respond to threat, real threats, potential threats, and sometimes even imagined threats. I love the way Rick Hansen says it in his book, Hardwiring Happiness. He says our ancestors could make two kinds of mistakes. The first mistake is think there's a tiger in the bushes when there isn't one. The second mistake is think there isn't a tiger in the bush when there actually is one. The cost of the first mistake, needless fear and anxiety. The cost of the second mistake, death. Consequently, our brains have evolved to make that first mistake a thousand times, so we don't even make the second mistake once. So most of us are not dealing with literal tigers in the bushes anymore. Most of us are dealing with threats that are more psychological than physical. And they're the kind of threat sensation that comes up when we start to imagine things like, am I really cared for? Am I included? Do people think well of me? Do I have enough control and freedom in my world? Do I feel like things are fair and equitable? So in our world, it's evolved so much faster than our brains have that our brains get overly stimulated. And they get overly stimulated in response to threats. And when that happens, our emotions ignite. The other thing that influences our wisdom for getting is that our brains need to work in a very energy efficient way. And when we move into habit mode, we conserve energy. So our brains love us to be in the habit mode. And the brain doesn't distinguish between good habits or bad habits. It's just happy we're doing a habit. All right? So thankfully, we have another part of our brain that can help us with all this. It's called the prefrontal cortex. It's right here behind your forehead. And it helps us with things like self-discipline, pausing, thinking, accessing wisdom and insights. Well, why doesn't the prefrontal cortex just kick in when we're starting to go a little crazy? Well, because the prefrontal cortex does all that brain heavy lifting, it needs a lot of energy. And so it needs some pretty specific conditions for it to work well for us. And left on its own, it doesn't work well for us when we are in habit mode or when our emotions escalate. Great. So how do we get this thing to work for us? It's right there. Well, there's actually a pretty simple three-step process. Recognize, pause, ask. Recognize when our emotions are escalating or when we're about to repeat a bad habit. Pause, stop, breathe. And the body and mind quickly calms down. And then ask a question that lets our brains know what kind of knowledge we want to access. So it's easier to understand this if we actually try it. So I hope you're willing. I'd like to invite you to sit comfortably in your chair and close your eyes. I promise I won't do anything while your eyes are closed that you don't want me to do. And I'd like you to bring to mind 
somebody that you're in a challenging space with, maybe a relationship that's a little rough, hit a rough patch. And now I'd like you to focus on your breath. And for each inhalation, I would like you to imagine that your mind and body are opening and expanding, like a balloon when it's filling with air. And when you exhale, I want you to let your mind and body soften and relax. So inhale, open and expand. Exhale, soften and relax. And I'd like you to do this at your own pace for the next 15 seconds. I'll keep track of time. And now with your eyes still closed, I'd like you to silently ask yourself this question. What is the wisest way for me to engage with this person? What is the wisest way for me to engage with this person? And then just rest for a moment and see what comes to you. Now I'd like you to take a deep breath in and exhale all the way out and open your eyes, come back into the room. So I hope you all had a sensation of being a little bit more relaxed and maybe a sensation of feeling a little bit more open in that space. I would guess based on our experience, several of you felt the beginnings of an insight come to you. You may have had that come in the form of words for some of you, you saw a picture, and for some of you, you had a sensation or a feeling. So what happens in that space is that we've given our brain a chance to rest for a minute, and we've let our prefrontal cortex get in a space where it's ready to respond to the question we ask. So, the questions. The best questions to access wisdom are non-judgmental questions. So they don't sound like, What's wrong with me? And why can't this person get their act together? They sound more like this. What's the most courageous and compassionate way I can handle this discussion? Where's the best place for me to expend my energy right now? What is the wisest way for me to move forward? And most recently, my favorite, what would I do if I wasn't scared to death? These questions help our brain give us the answers that we're looking for, often in unexpected ways. So in order to make this process our own, all that's required is a little bit of practice. Practice recognizing our emotions and our habits. Practicing to pause, stop, and breathe. Practice asking questions so we can find the questions that work best for us. But ultimately, this recognize, pause, ask to access wisdom is not hard. The hard part is remembering to try it. So here's my invitation. Give it a try. Play with it. Put your own spin on it. Make it your own. Share it with others. Because imagine if we stopped to pause and access wisdom a little bit more in our homes in our education spaces, in our workplaces, in our relationships. Imagine if we all stopped and accessed our wisdom just a little bit more. Then in addition to us all becoming a little bit wiser, we just might have a chance at creating a world that's a little bit wiser too. Thank you. <laughs>